Hi, my name is Tim Cruz. I'm a Principal Specialist Solutions Architect here at AWS. In this session, we will look at how you can run containerized applications without managing any servers with AWS Fargate. A lot of customers have started to deploy their applications using containers. Containers allow you to easily package your applications together with libraries and dependencies and run them in consistent environments. Containers are also popular in modern applications using microservice architectures. However, customers tell us that they do not want to provision complex infrastructures just to support their containerized workloads. They also don't want to scale, interact, or manage the underlying virtual machines. To solve these problems, we created AWS Fargate. AWS Fargate is a serverless compute engine that runs your containerized applications. You can focus on your application code and directly deploy your containers on Fargate without managing any servers. AWS Fargate works with both container orchestration on AWS Elastic Container Service and Elastic Kubernetes Service. ECS is a fully managed container orchestration service that is deeply integrated with other AWS services like Application Load Balancer and Autoscaling. EKS is a fully managed Kubernetes service. It runs the open source upstream Kubernetes and is certified to be conformant by the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. The two orchestrators use a different term to refer to a unit of work. Each unit of work in ECS is called a task, while in EKS, or Kubernetes, it is called a pod. Both task and pod refer to one or more containers and define your application. Regardless which orchestration engine you choose, you do not need to change your existing workflow to use Fargate. Fargate will launch your tasks across multiple availability zones while keeping each task in an isolated compute environment. You only pay for the CPU and memory resources you need to run those tasks. Fargate also provides native AWS integration for networking and security. Let's now dive a bit deeper and have a look at Fargate under the hood. Here, we are showing Amazon ECS running with EC2. At the top of the diagram, we have the control plane, which does the scheduling and placement of tasks. At the bottom, we have the data plane of ECS, which is an auto-scaling group, EC2 instances, across multiple availability zones. These EC2 hosts will run our workload as ECS tasks and communicate with the control plane using ECS agents. If we launch our ECS task in Fargate, you will notice that the EC2 in the diagram disappears. You only have ECS tasks in your VPC. So where did the EC2 go? To answer that question, let's take a look at how ECS runs tasks on EC2. The same process applies to Amazon EKS2. When ECS runs with an EC2 data plane, the following happens. First, you send an API request from your AWS account to the control plane managed by AWS, asking it to run an ECS task. The control plane then interacts with your AWS account to create resources necessary for the task to run. For example, an elastic network interface so the task gets its own IP address in the VPC. The task will launch in the auto-scaling group of EC2 in your AWS account. You will have to provision enough EC2 instances into your cluster and also have to manage the lifecycle of these instances and the overall capacity of the cluster. If there is insufficient capacity in the cluster, your task will not run. Let's compare this to ECS on Fargate. Again, you start by sending an API request to the ECS control plane, asking it to run a task. ECS then launches the task in a fleet of EC2 instances managed by Fargate. It then requests an ENI into your VPC, which gets attached to the Fargate task. This way, your Fargate task can connect to your AWS resources like databases or load balancers. But now, you don't need to provision any EC2 instances in your VPC or manage any instance lifecycle like agent updates or OS patching. You also don't have to manage the capacity of your cluster. Fargate will scale your containers for you based on the task autoscaling policy that you specify. Now, let's have a look at how we launch a task in Fargate. First, you will specify the amount of CPU and memory resource your application inside 
the task requires. You then need to provide the container image of your application. Within a task, you can have more than one container image. We treat these containers under the same task as a single unit of work. Here, you create a cluster, which is just a logical namespace of grouping as no servers are provisioned. Finally, you launch the task using the run task API, and you have a serverless instance of your application in your VPC. We now take a look at how the tasks are run in the Fargate fleet. These are EC2 instances managed by AWS. Each task runs in a dedicated instance as a single unit of work. Fargate never allocates two tasks in the same instance, even if both tasks belong to the same customer. Each EC2 instance runs one and only one task. Once the task completes, the EC2 is terminated and never reused again. From a security perspective, what this means is that every time you call run task or instantiate a pod in EKS, you get a fresh new EC2 instance. Let's now apply what we just discussed. We are going to deploy a Java application on AWS Fargate. Here's our requirement. We have a Java Spring Boot application, which performs basic API functions for a note-taking app. We want to achieve high availability through load balancing between multiple containers. As a developer, we also want to troubleshoot our application with centralized logging. We will also need an operation dashboard to monitor our container's performance metrics. Last but not least, we need to ensure all our application's secrets, like database passwords, are stored and retrieved securely. Let's start with the base infrastructure. We have a VPC with an ECS Fargate cluster. This cluster is just a logical grouping. There are no EC2 instances provisioned. For our database, we will be using Amazon Aurora Serverless, which is an on-demand auto-scaling configuration of Amazon Aurora with a MySQL compatible engine. Aurora Serverless can automatically scale up and down the database capacity based on our application's needs. Next, to deploy our Java application on AWS Fargate, we first define the task definition and set it to auto-scale based on CPU performance thresholds. We can also use other metrics like load balancer request counts, memory, or any custom metrics inside CloudWatch. The task definition also includes information on where is the container image hosted, central logging configuration, and database password retrieval. We will then configure an ECS service, which integrates our ECS task with an application load balancer. The load balancer will also perform health checks on the application before sending the user requests to the tasks. To secure our database password, our Java application will store and retrieve the password from Amazon Secret Manager. Secrets Manager helps protect the database password by encrypting it with an AWS key management service. It also helps to easily rotate your secrets and enables you to define fine-grained permissions and audit control. For our application container image, we will use Amazon Elastic Container Registry, or ECR. ECR is a fully managed container repository that makes it easy for developers to store, manage, and deploy container images. It also performs image scanning to detect any software vulnerabilities in your images. Finally, to help our developers troubleshoot their applications, Amazon CloudWatch Logs Insights enables them to interactively search and analyze their application logs across multiple containers. CloudWatch also provides container insights, which allows them to monitor their application performance using a pre-created dashboard. So now, we want to provision the AWS resources that we discussed so far. To allow us to deploy these resources consistently, we will need to build out a template using infrastructure as code. Typically, this means writing a long and complex JSON or YAML as a template and then provision these resources through AWS CloudFormation. Besides JSON and YAML, we can also use familiar programming language to model our AWS resources using the AWS Cloud Development Kit, or CDK. These languages include TypeScript, JavaScript, Python, c -sharp, and Java. Here, you see the TypeScript code that defines our Fargate cluster 
and the Spring Boot application running as an ECS task behind an application load balancer. CDK is a software development framework for defining cloud resources. Using this framework, we write code in JavaScript or Python or any of the supported languages as a CDK application. Within that CDK application, we have one or more infrastructure st stacks which consist of CDK constructs. A CDK construct is an abstraction of the cloud resource. A construct here can be an ECS cluster or a VPC or an application load balancer. Once we have our CDK application, we can use the CDK command line tool to synthesize these constructs into templates and then provision our AWS resources using CloudFormation. We've been talking about Amazon ECS so far. What if we want to deploy an EKS cluster instead? This simple CDK application here will deploy an EKS cluster for Fargate in a newly created VPC. Alternatively, you can also define the same cluster using an open source tool, EKSCTL, or your choice of infrastructure as code tool like Terraform or AWS CloudFormation. We will now do a short demo on all that we've discussed so far. I will start with the CDK application and deploy all our AWS resources, including the Java application. Next, I'll show you the ECS task auto-scaling setup. Finally, I will show you the operation dashboard and centralized log searching. Here, you see our CDK application, which defines our VPC and ECS cluster in a few lines. Next, we have our database construct, which defines a MySQL engine 5.6 for Aurora serverless. Further down, we have our Spring Boot application defined in a construct, which includes a load balancer, task definition with just one task count. We also define the source of our application in a folder called Spring Boot App. This is where our container image is defined. CDK will package this and upload it to ECR. Notice also how we specify the database password as a retrieval from Secret Manager. Finally, we also set up our ECS task to autoscale from one to a maximum of six tasks using target tracking. With target tracking, we choose CPU as the scaling metrics and the target value of 45%. What this means is ECS will calculate add more tasks to keep the utilization close to 45%. OK, now we will deploy the CDK app using the command line tool. CDK will synthesize the code into CloudFormation templates and deploy all our resources. Once deployed, we get the endpoint to our application load balancer. We can also jump to the CloudFormation tab to verify the stack has deployed successfully. Let's also have a look at our ECS cluster. You notice that there are no EC2 instances attached in the cluster, and a single running task is created already. If you go over to the auto-scaling tab, you will see our target tracking has been configured with a threshold of 45% for our CPU metric. Let's now take a look at our application. We can access it using the ALB endpoint. First, we can try to retrieve all our nodes. Notice that there is no records. That is because our database has not been populated with any entry. Let's use the HTTP POST command to insert one record. Now, let's do retrieval again. Here you go. We have retrieved the record from our Aurora database successfully. Next, we want to prepare a stress test on our application so that it can trigger the task to autoscale. We will use Artillery, an open source load testing tool, and start our load generator. We'll keep this load test running while we jump over to our AWS console. Amazon CloudWatch provides a dashboard called Container Insights. Here, you can monitor your ECS and EKS clusters and also your tasks and pods. We will choose our ECS Fargate cluster and observe what happens during the load test. 
as you can see, when the CPU spikes above the 45% mark, target tracking autoscales our task from one to the maximum of six tasks. As we release the load testing, ECS gradually scales down the task count to one. Finally, let's find out how to search our application logs. You can find the CloudWatch log group name for our cluster in the CloudFormation console. We'll copy the name and open up CloudWatch Logs Insights. CloudWatch Log Insights allows us to search and analyze our logs. We choose the log group of our application and a time frame we want to search, and execute a simple query to search our logs. We can also use the query language to filter specific text, for example, during troubleshooting. I want to know how long it takes for the JVM to start up. I can use the filter command and query all my logs across all the containers. With that, I want to thank you again for attending, and we really appreciate your feedback, so please take the time to fill out our survey and let us know what you think.